Hello Synapse community, my name is Venkatesh Parasuraman and I am a Senior Program Manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. Welcome to the Azure Synapse Security Deep Dive series. In the last video, we saw inbound network security. In this video, I am going to talk about outbound network security in Synapse. Before we dive into this topic, let's cover some basics. So, what are outbound connections? Any connection that is going out of Synapse workspace to access other resources and services is called an outbound connection. Okay, so what are the possible outbound connections from Synapse? From a dedicated SQL pool and serverless SQL pool, we can only connect to an Azure storage account. But from the Synapse pipelines and Apache Spark pools, we can connect to more than 90 different services via linked services. Now, let's look at some examples for outbound connections. Copying data from a dedicated SQL pool or a serverless SQL pool to an external storage account with CETAS command is an outbound connection. Connecting to a REST API through a linked service and copying data using that connection in a Synapse pipeline is an outbound connection. Connecting to Azure ML workspace through a linked service and accessing them from a Synapse Spark notebook is an outbound connection. These are only some of the examples for outbound connections, but there could be a lot more possible like these. Now, let's look at another interesting concept called managed private endpoint connections. In the first video in the series for network isolation, we saw that the Apache Spark pools and Azure integration runtimes can be deployed inside the managed VNet if you enable them. So, outbound connections from the managed VNets to certain Azure data sources which supports private endpoints such as storage accounts, databases, etc. can be made to go privately, that is, entirely within the Microsoft backbone network without traversing the internet with the use of managed private endpoint connections. These managed private endpoints provides secure and private outbound connectivity for Apache Spark pools and Synapse pipelines that uses Azure integration runtimes. However, connections from dedicated SQL pools and serverless SQL pools to these storage accounts do not go via these managed private endpoints and hence they require a firewall exception on the storage account. But this access can be restricted to specific Synapse instances with the use of managed identities, which we will talk about more in our next videos. So far, we saw some basics for outbound connectivity from Synapse. Now, let's talk about why outbound security is so important. Because a privileged user such as a Synapse contributor with access to these linked services can potentially create a new linked service to their own storage account outside the organization and copy the data from any existing data sources in Synapse to their own storage account using the Synapse pipelines or Spark notebooks. Similarly, a privileged user on a Synapse SQL engine can write the data out to their own external storage using the CE task command. This is called data exfiltration. So, how to prevent this data exfiltration? With Synapse, security is so simple. When creating your Synapse workspace, you can simply enable allow outbound data traffic only to approved targets in the networking section. That's all you need to do. This setting will ensure that all outbound connections from the Synapse workspace, including the dedicated SQL pools and serverless SQL pools can be made only to the targets of managed private endpoint connections in an approved AD tenant. Your own tenant is automatically added to this list, but you can always add additional tenants after you create your workspace and it can be done only by the owners of the Synapse resource. Please note that this data exfiltration protection is available only when you enable managed VNets. Also, just like managed VNets, this data exfiltration setting cannot be modified after the workspace has been provisioned. You have to choose it at the time of creation. How does this data exfiltration protection work? Let's take three tenants, tenant A, tenant B, 
and tenant C. A synapse road space has been created in tenant A with managed DNet and data exfiltration protection enabled. Tenant B has been added as an approved tenant in the synapse workspace. But tenant C has not been added to the approved tenants list. When you create a managed private endpoint to any Azure resource within tenant A, such as a storage account, that connection is permitted by the outbound firewalls because the resource is an auto-approved tenant list. Similarly, when you create a managed private endpoint connection to any Azure resource within tenant B, such as a storage account, that connection is also permitted by the outbound firewalls because that resource is an approved tenant list. But when you create a managed private endpoint connection to any resource outside of tenant A and B, such as tenant C, that connection is blocked by the outbound firewall rules. Since data exfiltration protection is enabled on this workspace, all connections from the Apache Spark pools and Azure integration runtimes need to use this managed private endpoints. You cannot connect to any resource without a managed private endpoint connection. The dedicated SQL pools and serverless SQL pools do not directly use this managed private endpoints for their connectivity. But if you try to use CE tasks and export the data out to an external storage account, at that point, Synapse will automatically check for the existence of these managed private endpoints to that storage account and only then such a connection is permitted. Otherwise, the outbound firewall rule will block such a connection. This is how data exfiltration protection or DEP is implemented in Synapse. When you enable DEP in a Synapse workspace, it will prevent you from doing certain operations which are commonly performed in pipelines, such as connecting to a REST API or any service that is hosted publicly outside your organization, authenticating to a service via service principle or OAuth, connecting to Azure machine learning workspaces to run pipelines, and many other scenarios where the outbound connection goes outside the approved tenant list. This is by design. So, how to overcome this? There are two approaches that I will discuss based on various customer scenarios that we see. One is to use a self-hosted integration runtime for connecting to these services. Self-hosted integration runtime, as we saw in our previous video, are deployed outside the managed VNets and also they are fully managed by the customers in their own networks. This gives you the flexibility to define fine-grained outbound firewall rules for SHIR, such as allowing specific websites, port numbers, etc. using a firewall appliance or a network security group. Currently, this is not possible in a managed VNet. Use of SHIR can be leveraged for many scenarios where the activity is executed on some other compute resource, but the pipeline is only used to orchestrate dispatch and monitor, such as calling a REST API, executing an AML pipeline, etc. In some cases, use of SHIR is not a viable option, such as Spark pools. In those cases, it is a good practice to isolate secure zone and non-secure zone. Create different Synapse workspaces and resources for secure zones with DEP enabled and different Synapse workspaces for non-secure zones with DEP disabled. That way, you can still control your sensitive data with DEP and work around its limitations. Well, that wraps up our video for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share. Again, my name is Venkatesh Parasuraman and you can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Signing off now and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.